Wildling Press presents How Do I Book? Welcome to How Do I Book by Wildling Press. We like to chat about book writing, book publishing, book marketing, and of course, book reading. We're trying to help new and experienced authors develop their craft, widen their perspectives, and learn to get a little wild every once in a while. I'm Grace. I'm Christina. I'm Mary Payton. And I'm Mike. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. (laughs) How's everyone today? Uh, Full. Of coffee. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Love it. And you're full, maybe, from Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a lovely holiday. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I ate a lot. That does mean, though, that we are at the very end of November. Wowzers. And, yeah, which is really, it's really wild. But that means that NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, has come to an end. Oop. We have a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. Got a little bit. Uh, NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization that promotes creative writing around the world. Its flagship program is an annual international creative writing event in which participants attempt to write a 50,000-word manuscript during the month of November. So we wanted to talk to the folks out there who participated in this event and discuss what you're going to do now. Um, As we mentioned, the goal of this month is to finish the 50,000 word manuscript. And I want to start this episode by saying, even if you didn't quite meet that goal, that is a okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You should be so, so proud of yourself for what you accomplished this month. It's incredible. Um, If you did finish a 50,000 word book, wow, you really did that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Dang, you're awesome. Any of y'all, have you guys participated in NaNoWriMo? You know my answer. <laughs> yeah, my God. Yeah, Mike, tell us about that 50,000-word novel you wrote. Yeah, no. <laughs> Never. I commend anybody that can do that. I've participated, but I don't think I've ever finished, which is, like, mm-hmm. fine, because for me, it's like, well, I wrote half of it, and I'm the kind of person who, like, is going to finish that. Some people, I think, if they didn't win, might choose to not finish, because that's what they call winning, NaNoWriMo or NaNoWriMo is like if you finish. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've started it before, but stopped after like a week. I think that was the longest that I went <laughs> doing the actual like goal day by day. Um, That's very fair. Yeah, it's it's hard. That's how I wrote Brunch Purgatory, which is the manuscript that I'm like finalizing right now. Yay! Nice. That's very exciting. Well, all this to say, if what you actually need to do after this month is like sleep, or play a cool video game, mm-hmm. read a couple books on the old TBR, please do that. <laughs> Unwind. Yeah. You've earned it. Mm-hmm. You have. But if you would like to keep the creativity momentum going, we've got some stuff for you. When I was doing the research for this episode, I, of course, came across a totally invaluable page on nanorimo.org. It's called Now What?, and so I first and foremost want to give credit where credit is due for NaNoWriMo having this page on their website. I think that's very cool and awesome that they have this whole program mm-hmm. and also some what to do after steps because it can be a little bit overwhelming. Like you just wrote a 50,000 word book. What are you supposed to do now? Mm-hmm. Um, so good for them. And so we're going to chat uh, today about a couple of things that they recommend and then sprinkle in a bit of our own recommendations here and there oh cool i just pulled this up you piqued my interest so i've gone to their website yeah i love it they have a a very excellent website i know a lot of people just kind of participate unofficially Mm -hmm. i honestly didn't know how in depth the website goes with setting goals and resources and stuff like that so i definitely just generally recommend checking out the website because it's so so helpful So from this point on, we'll be speaking as if you have a fully finished draft. If that's not the case and your goal is to finish your first draft, then NaNoWriMo recommends um, that you set an 800 words per day goal to do that. So that'll get you 24,000 words by the end of the next month. That's very cool. Yeah. For those authors who did finish their books and want to dive right back in, first thing to do 
which sounds so scary, is um, to start revising. Oof. Yeah, that feels like a lot immediately. <laughs> But you finish your book, let's face it, at lightning speed. So it's totally normal and expected that she might be like a little messy Bessie right. at this point. This can make an already super hard thing, which is self-editing, even harder. Because I don't know about you guys, but my instinct is to kind of always fix like small line issues because that's what I can sort of see immediately. But during the first revision, you really need to zoom out. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to zoom out so much that you're actually just a reader. You need to really go into your reader mode for this, which is, honestly feels even harder because, you know, you've just been immersed in this world of your own book for the last, like, 30 days. So it, to zoom out is really hard. I just wanted to say, too, I don't know if they mentioned this in the website, but I really like the idea, too, of once you finish whatever you're writing, taking a breath before you revise. Like, yes, I do agree that that's your next step with the manuscript, but... I love the idea of, like, stepping away from it. Yeah. Hold on. Let me do this. Give me this moment. I swear to God, I wrote about this in my book. <laughs> um, very first thing after what is a book publisher, the very next thing is take a break from your manuscript. If you finished writing your manuscript yesterday, today is not the day to get published. Take a break and let it simmer before revisiting it again. Take a weekend trip. Focus on work. Read other people's books. Drink some tea. Take a walk. Do anything besides think about your book. Why? Because writing a book is a long, hard, involved process, and odds are you've been really close to this project for a long time. You need to get some distance from it so when you do come back to it, it's with a fresh, clear, and energized mind. You still have a long way to go, and you don't want to burn out now. Guys, we don't have to write our podcast episodes anymore. We can just read directly from the book. <laughs> Any book publishing from start to finish, it's going to be awesome mm -hmm. by Christina Khan. Pre-order it today. Yay! Yeah! Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's such an important part of it, that, that stepping away. And Grace, you even mentioned it at the beginning, that like, play a video game, read a book. Yeah. You know, that just helps your head get out of that like tiny, minuscule viewpoint, that detail viewpoint, and step back and yeah. see that whole big picture. Yeah. Totally true. If I'm reading a book... Or I guess even when I'm editing a book, like I'll not read it initially in like the same place where I'm going to be editing it. I'll go to my couch and like read through it or I'll go to like a coffee shop or something because I feel like if I'm at my desk, I'm not in my little reader mode. Mm -hmm. So just change your, your setting a little bit. That can help a lot of times. That's a good idea. Yeah. If you have an e-reader, it can feel a little bit more like you're reading an actual finished book if you're reading it on a different device than the laptop where you wrote it. Mm -hmm. Guys, any other thoughts? Christina, you just listed a bunch from your invaluable <laughs> resource of your own book. <laughs> um, no, I think that's pretty solid. Back in the olden days, people yeah. like to print out their manuscript to revisit it, but I just frankly yeah. cannot in good conscience recommend that anymore. That's so much paper, dude. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It is. So the initial read-through is a great opportunity for you to see where your book might be lacking in pace, plot, character, etc. And that's exactly what you need to be looking for at this point. Um, don't worry about line edits. There will be time enough for that. Think big picture. And so obviously you want to do the initial read through like quickly. You got to do that in a couple days. Mm -hmm. That way you can really get a full understanding of where your book is succeeding and where it might need some work. Um, and once you fix any sort of big picture issues that might need fixing, you can kind of get into the more granular revisions. After you do that first read, like as a reader, my recommendation is to, again, put it down, like read it as a reader and like write down some notes about the spots that need strengthening and then like don't push it, like don't push mm -hmm. those issues because for me at least... When I'm working on like a plot hole or like this character's got to get here or like what is the motivation for this? It's usually like when I'm like driving or something mm -hmm. that I'm just like really percolating on it. And then I get a good idea, make a voice memo on my phone because we don't text while we drive. <laughs> and so like I, I think that stepping back from it, like in between almost every step I th is like a, a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, NaNoWriMo has a suggestion for a revision goal, so I will share that with you. Revise for 60 minutes a day for the next 30 days. That's 1,800 minutes total, so pretty good. I like that 
Because that's only, you know, only an hour a day, which is a chunk of a chunk of your time, but it's not terrible. You, it, you can do that. Mm-hmm. But it also shows you just how much effort you should be putting into that revision. Like, it's not something that you could just over the weekend read over it and be like, right. that's good. Taking that time and splitting it up really is important. I totally agree. And also, it's I wouldn't even set the expectation of having all of your revisions done in 30 days. Yeah, I was totally about to say the same thing. Yeah, NaNoWriMo is like, I think that they're speaking to the lowest common denominator in terms of like authorial experience. They are writing these guidelines for novice authors, which a lot of people are. Almost all of our authors are brand new authors. That's like totally cool and normal. But I think that's why they're like, only start here. Whereas like we as experienced editors know that some books will be done in half that amount of editing and some books need the next year of editing. So after you've kind of done some self-editing, it's a good idea to get some other people involved. Like your cousin? Wait, no, wait, I got a <laughs> quote for this. Wait, wait a second. Get in there, girl. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. <laughs> One or more trusted beta readers to get their input. Your sibling who loves to read or your spouse who took creative writing in college are not ideal candidates for this process. People who are too close to you may find it difficult to convey their true opinions on what is wrong with your book, so you may not get a comprehensive review from them. You'll also want to seek out someone with more than just a passing interest in books. Find an editor, a fellow author, a passionate reader of your genre, someone from your writing class, an authority on the craft of writing and storytelling. What is that an excerpt from? <laughs> Indie book publishing from start to finish, colon, it's going to be awesome, by one Christina Kahn. <laughs> Hitting the shelves of every online retailer <laughs> January 9th. Um, wow, I have nothing to add to that. It was <laughs> exactly. I, I literally have no notes. Um, the, I mean, I will say that if you do happen to know another author who is participating in NaNoWriMo, they could be a great resource because you could do a little swapsies. Totally. Like a problem that I have experienced, I've heard other people experience all the time with beta readers is like follow through because um, a lo- especially a lot of the time if they're like, you said like a writing partner or someone, there's like often not money exchange, it's like a trade or something or like someone that you know will like offer to do that for you a lot of the times in my experience. And then there's like zero accountability and they just don't do it. <laughs> So yeah, I, right. I think like doing a swap after Nano Remo with someone else who has participated is a great idea because their motivation is getting the same thing back from you. It's easier to hold each other accountable mm-hmm. if you're seeking like the same thing from each other. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so once you've done that and you've made any um, edits that you need to make, everything's looking really good. You're feeling so polished. You can query. Oh my God! Yay. Wait. Wait, wait. Christina has something. She wait, has something for this. Wait. Getting ready to query. I don't even know why I did this episode. I, I thought, Christina, this should have been you. You should have just <laughs> you should have just read from your book the whole time. Getting ready to query. No, you tell me. You tell me because I wrote too much about querying. It's complicated. Mine's very short and sweet. I'll start with mine because it's very short and sweet. You can sort of flesh it out for yes, us, okay? Yes, do that. So querying involves figuring out which publishing path you'd like to take so decide whether you even want to publish your book sometimes people write a book during this month and they're like all right cool i wrote a book that's all i wanted to do or they post it to like their blog or to like wattpad or something yes um if you do want to publish a book you know you need to decide which publishing path you'd like to take you may want to self-publish you may want to seek out an indie press um or go the traditional route so you just got to decide What you want to do, you got to research those presses you'd like to submit to to see if your book falls in line with other books that they've published. If you want a literary agent, you got to do some research on that. Uh, You got to write a query letter, et cetera, et cetera. For real, like not not even to like be this way, but it it is like a very complex thing figuring out how you want to get published and which one makes the most sense for your book. And my book does go into depth about it. I think like throughout, even like after I get past like the querying part of it it's like throughout the book i'm like if you're going traditional it'll be this way if you're self-publishing it'll be this way but this book is about indie publishing which is this way so you get like a a, an overview of how all of those processes will very generally go and that is like the best way to make a decision is by is by really getting an understanding 
of exactly like what the differences are. Anything else you'd want to add, Christina? Yeah, it's, querying is hard. I recommend like Googling it like hell. Like that's how I learned about querying. Um, when I first started querying my novels when I was like 17. Cannot recommend that to most 17 year olds. Oh no, it's a good learning <laughs> process. <laughs> But, like, yeah, querying is just hard. It's long. Keep good notes. And, like, rejections are great. Rejections mean that, like, you're moving forward and getting your work in front of people. Um, like, no one doesn't get rejected. What's the number? Let me see how quickly I can find it in my book. Yeah, I was going to ask about the C.S. Lewis thing. Oh, yeah, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis got rejected 800 times before he got published. Granted, his first book is bad. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> This was not Chronicles of Narnia. It was oh, what even the was planet. the name of that book? Yeah, it's the planet one. Um, and it was bad. I read it. It was it was yeah. like white man stumbles onto foreign like planet, air breathable, plants eatable, <laughs> stumbles around like an idiot. <laughs> classic, classic like old school white man literature. Um, yeah, he got rejected 800 times. I'm, tr- I'm looking for the Stephen King number because everybody loves hearing about Stephen oh, yeah. King. Oh, getting rejected. I know I have that section somewhere in here. Rejection. <laughs> Carrie was rejected by 80 publishers before it was accepted by Doubleday. And like, oh, C.S. Lewis's book was called Out of the Silent Planet. That's why I think that the, that the Stephen King statistic is more impressive because Carrie is extremely good. We read that for our Wildling Book Club last month um, or the month before. Like, Carrie is an extremely good book. Out of the Silent Planet is bad, and I support that being rejected 800 times. <laughs> <laughs> so NaNoWriMo suggests that you dedicate at least 60 minutes a day for the next 30 days toward publishing. And so, like, I guess that 60 minutes a day would be researching, taking care of notes, working on your synopsis and your other query materials, actually sending those emails. Yeah, anything involved in the query process. Yeah, it's long. Everything in making a book is, like, an extremely long process. It is so true. Those are some steps you can take if you're feeling a little overwhelmed after you finished your beautiful, amazing book. And we're so proud of you. Yeah. And you did great. <laughs> um, and consider submitting your manuscript to Wildling Press. Yeah. We would love to see Especially it. Especially if it's like queer sci-fi fantasy. We publish all genres, but that's our favorite. And that's how you book. This episode was produced by me, Grace Ball. Our logo was designed by Michael Hardison. Our theme music was produced by Jason Hilton at Negative Selections on Instagram. Visit us online at Wildlink Press on social media or at wildlinkpress.com.